we in the World Trade Organization uh, sort of have a sort of principle that we recognize as a priori okay standards which have been set up by other international organizations. If you take food, for instance, there's a Codex Alimentarius, which is a, a subsidiary of a, a WHO and a FAO. No, it's okay because it's a public standard. It's been set up by an international organization, which is driven by sovereign nation states who've accepted to set up this standard. Now, what about a private standard? What about you know, Walmart uh, signing a, a charter with a, a consumer organization and deciding that, uh, in terms of food safety, uh, the standard will be Codex Alimentarius++. Plus plus. And if a big retail chain does that, the impact it has on uh, the producer or the exporter in a developing country may sometimes be 10, 20 times bigger than any tariff reduction that we could have worked out in a, in a, in a negotiation or as part of our sort of regulation of, uh, of international trade. So there is an issue there in the competition between public standards and private standards which, by the way, developing countries are putting more and more on the table in the World Trade Organization. And the question then becomes, uh, should the sort of fairness and ethical content of private standards percolate into public standards? And who should be pushing for that? I mean, should business push for that? Because if I'm, if I'm Walmart, or, or Tesco, I'm in the business of economies of scale. So I'd better have a good world public standard, even if it's stringent, that rather than 10 or 15 private standards which oblige me to sort of cut my operation and my sourcing or distribution uh, chains. Even the most, I mean, the best intentions NGOs should think that in pushing in this direction, they also simultaneously have to push for transparency and for sort of assisting developing countries to match with these standards. It's one thing to push for something which is more environmentally friendly, socially friendly. It's another thing to think about, again, the guy who produces that at the other end of the chain. The coherence should be that you simultaneously push for uh, the producers uh, to have the sort of necessary uh, uh, technical assistance. And this is especially valid in uh, things like uh, sanitary and phytosanitary standards or, or technical barriers to trade. Uh, there are sort of public technical assistance programs for that. We in the WTO run uh, standard uh, and trade uh, development uh, facility for uh, uh, sanitary and phytosanitary standards, I mean, the purpose of which is help developing countries getting the necessary technical skills and the sort of simple lab testing network, for instance, which is not rocket science, but uh, which uh, costs a bit of money. There has to be a sort of overall coherence uh, between this part of what the consumer wants to do and the impact it has at the other end. Because after all, those who push for that are sort of full of good intentions. The good intention being that it should result in more environmentally friendly or socially friendly practices. If it's just only displacing the market, from somebody uh, who's producing uh, uh, you know, for a living, it doesn't make ethically, I'm not sure the uh, balance at the end of the day is right. 
And finally, there are things which we can do publicly with international member-driven organizations in order to promote this, this sort, of, sort of behavior. If in the Doha round we succeed in reducing tariffs more on clean technology or environmentally friendly goods, or if in uh, the services market opening <coughs> part of the, of the negotiation, environmental services have a sort of plus, which by the way I believe they will have looking at what's already on the table, then we can sort of create a synergy between what we do on the sort of big picture and what civil society organizations, consumer organizations do on the more sort of limited part of the market.